Hi, welcome back. We're going to talk about default parameters and named parameters, um, otherwise known as default arguments or named arguments. Well, what is it, a parameter or argument? Well, let's say we have a method that wants to do some information, do some execution based on a certain variable. So instead of having two variables up here, or one variable rather, I'm going to create two variables. I'm going to call it my bool2. Okay. And you can you can create multiple variables with the single type name by dictating a comment after the one of the variables and putting a white space character and putting another one. You don't have to put a white space, but the white space character makes it a lot uh, more readable. Excuse me. Okay, so there. What's the difference between a default argument and a named argument or default parameter, named parameter? I'm gonna call them parameters, not arguments, because um, that's how I was taught. But just know that they're called two different things. In C++, there are well, in programming in general. Um, the names of things might be different. So I'm trying to use as many names as I can to kind of get you used to what some people might tell you um, they are. So in our header, we are going to um, define another variable. And so I'm going to actually do a little bit different with this one. I'm going to say this one's going to be true if I can spell it. So previously we had um, our method said, okay, we're going to set my boolean to being true, right? Well, we're going to just comment that out for now. <clears throat> and we're going to go back into our header and for our method, we're going to say bool inside the methods curved brackets. We're gonna def we're gonna define a argument or parameter. So I'm gonna say, be my bool param. Okay. Now this is a named parameter. It's named, but it's not a default. If it were default, I would have to put a initialization inside the parameter name, inside the parameters scope okay so I'm not gonna do that for this one but um that's the difference um, this is a named parameter and a named parameter must be called it must so uh, what I'll do here is I'll, I'll copy this and um so before we go on any further, I'm going to show you how to write a proper fun uh, proper comment for a function or parameter. You use a multi-line comment, and what you do is the first line is looks like this. first line says what it does and it can be multiple lines if you need to and then you say at param and I would say be my bool param and then you would put a minus sign and this is what you would say you would you would specify what this parameter does in here and what what we're doing essentially is we're creating a comment that will tell us a bunch of information about the parameter the parameters and the returns and all sorts of stuff so we are only gonna have one parameter in here and actually by default um, or for our, my function, we're going to call this a default parameter or argument. So that way we don't have to call it if we don't want to. 
a this type of parameter must be utilized it must be this method must have some variable passed into it my function since it has a default parameter it does not need to be you can call my function without passing in a parameter so um, we're returning the value of the past and parameter my okay so this will be the past in param meter okay and what we would do then is we would say at uh, return space the value of b value of the past in boolean parameter returns the value of the past in boolean parameter okay uh, my bool is the past in boolean parameter and the value of the past in boolean parameter this is how you properly write a comment for a function or method what you are essentially doing is you are telling um, I believe it's Java Docs so you're automatically allowing Java Docs to extract the comments from the code and build documentation so if you utilize this formatting of comments above your function definition or method function uh, definition you are allowing javadocs to basically take this over and create documentation based on what you typed and now this may seem redundant because you're you're explaining what's happening but for people who don't know um, what you're trying to do and they go to look at the documentation um, you you're essentially allowing people to understand what you're doing with this specific method or function so it's really important that you do something like this um, to make it more readable and automatically create documentation for your code so we'll keep that like that we'll just keep this one up here um, as that so you can see the difference if you um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this parameter and I'm going to put it, see it gives us an error, it says error declaration is incompatible with this specific function implementation. So now we have to go in here and we have to say that this equals false as well. Um, it's, I'm not sure if this is necessary of a default parameter of, of, by double initializing it to false, but in my when I was taught how to do this I was always taught to be consistent so yeah so we'll do the same thing up here and what we're gonna do is actually we're gonna uncomment this and we're gonna take my bool param and we're gonna set that to that we're gonna set my boolean to my boolean parameter now in the function we're gonna return not my bool but we're just gonna return my boolean parameter so let's go back out here and um, trying to think of what I was doing oh right okay so we have a true and false variables at the um, that we have implemented um, bool and bool2 so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my method and I'm gonna say now remember since this is not a default parameter it's only a named parameter we must put something in this method if we don't the compiler will give us an error saying hey you called this method and there's now a parameter uh, given so let's do that 
what we're going to do is we're going to give it my bool2. And of course, at the end of statements, we put a semicolon. So what this is saying is we're calling my method, and it's going to set, set my bool to whatever we passed into it. So in our case, it's my boolean2, which will be true. So now, if we were to call my function, we could do it one of two ways because it's a default parameter. We could call it like this, which would essentially just return. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go in here and create a third boolean just for SNGs. Um, and let's go ahead and, and give it that initialization of false. Okay. Like I implemented these guys on a single line, you can also, or since I defined these guys on a single line, you can also implement them on a single line. So let's go back down here to my function and we could have called it one of two ways like I said we could have called it just like that and what that will do is that will return actually um, it will have to be b my bool equals my function three is what I wanted um, the reason why you must because my function is returning something you need it you need the return value to be put into something so since Actually, I wanted to do it this way. Okay, we wanted it to be true, and then when we pass, when we call my function, we're we're setting this to be true. So, we're setting my boolean one sets a public boolean member my bool. to the value of the passed in parameter. Let's just do that so it's consistent. And we'll go down here and actually let me um we don't technically since we have this we don't technically need this, but we'll keep it there anyways. So if you were to hover over my function, it would tell you this stuff, which is really helpful. So like I said, we don't have to pass in a variable or pass in something, a param we don't have to pass in a parameter because it's default, but we'll just show you how to do that as well. So now when if we were to compile this you wouldn't understand anything that went on in the program. So we're going to utilize something called a log. Now I always forget how to create a log. So I'm going to go to the documentation and I'm going to go find a log, um, how to implement it, and we'll come back and we'll implement our log. And you'll, when we run this, you'll be able to see what is happening. So, stay tuned.